filled with so many different barrels out there, you might be asking yourself, what's the difference? people think about barrels, they usually think of something that looks kind of like that. That's just the stock barrel off of a Buffet R13 clarinet. Um, and uh, given that they're the largest clarinet manufacturer in the world, if you see a clarinet barrel, odds are better that it's from a Buffet than from any other company. Uh, its defining characteristics are, well, if we just look at it, we see it's made from some kind of black wood, and it's got two rings, one on the top and one on the bottom. And for years and years, this has been the standard of what people perceive a barrel should look like. It's made of grenadilla wood, and Buffet actually dyes theirs black. So a lot of people think that grenadilla actually kind of looks like this. Grenadilla is really a dark brown, not really black. And then the rings are just uh, nickel silver is the type of metal it is. And then they silver plate the nickel silver. Um, and that's the same thing that they do for keys on almost every brand of clarinet. So... Um, the rings aren't as necessary today as they were many years ago. Uh, manufacturing has improved a lot, and they used to put the rings on the instrument because this is a real weak point because the metal's a lot, or the wood is a lot thinner there, right, at the socket. So wood is going to expand and contract, especially if you're in harsh um, environments with uh, unstable humidity levels. So the rings, metal's not going to move when that stuff changes. So the metal is there to kind of stabilize everything. But manufacturing got a lot better. People, um, clarinet manufacturers are a lot better at stabilizing the wood. So rings aren't so necessary anymore. And uh, many years ago, Bakun almost started like a bit of a, a barrel revolution when they introduced this. And they actually call it the ringless barrel. They don't make it anymore. Um, it's a very nice aftermarket barrel. Uh, they distributed it through Con Selmer. It's uh, made of Grenadilla wood, just like that buffet I showed you, but you can see the difference in color there. Uh, Bakun just kind of lets the natural wood show through. I think it looks way nicer than just an all black dyed uh, piece of wood. So yeah, it's a really beautiful piece of wood there. So that kind of got things going in the ringless direction, and now lots of companies make barrels that don't have any rings on them at all. Some companies are a bit more traditional, like Buffet, and they still make them with rings. That's two of their Icon barrels right there, and they have rings, and you can, probably can tell that those rings aren't made of the same thing. Uh, this one's actually black nickel plated, while this one's just silver plated. And these are both very light. Um, Buffet thought that they would have better response from the barrels if they made them super light. And a lot of people do notice the immediacy of response when they're trying the Icon barrels. Bakun kind of went in the opposite direction of going lighter. And um, one of their more recognizable barrels is right there. That's the Fat Boy barrel. A ton of extra weight on these, and that's what gives them their really unique um, tonal characteristics. So you might notice, hey, these barrels don't look like they're made out of the same wood, and they're not. This one is made from Grenadilla, just like the last few barrels I showed you. However, this one's made from Coca Bolo, which is very recognizable because of its sort of reddish color. It can be a very, very dark red, sometimes difficult to tell the difference between Coca Bolo and Grenadilla. But if you see anything in the wood and you say, that looks reddish to me, even if it's a very, very dark red, then that's going to be. Grenadilla, or that's going to be Coco Bolo, excuse me. And if you see anything that's um, browns or very dark browns, that's going to be Grenadilla. So why a different wood? A lot of people say that Coco Bolo has a bit of a warmer sound than Grenadilla. Well, Grenadilla has more high overtones, and some people say it has more of a ping to the sound. Um, it's all very subjective terms, but I would actually agree with that. Um, I think Coco Bolo does have a bit of a warmer sound, and I actually love the combination of a Coco Bolo barrel on a Grenadilla instrument. It's kind of a best of both worlds thing. So, and then um, once in a while you'll see some crazy materials, like that's a custom barrel that I made. 
Uh, and that's made from something called Delrin. It's a plastic-like material, and it's just it's not going to have the nice um, woody characteristic of Grenadilla or Cocobolo, but the advantage you get is it's not going to change in shape and size and length. It's going to be very, very stable if you're playing in kind of an unforgiving or harsh environment. And then once in a while you'll see uh, tulip wood makes a very nice barrel, but it's very difficult to manufacture. And uh, boxwood, I've seen boxwood barrels also very difficult to manufacture. So that's, those are the main things that a barrel is typically going to be made out of. I um, just want to show you the difference and how different um, Cocobolo can look. So that one almost looks sort of orange. And then you've got that one that's a very, very dark red. Those are the exact same wood. So unlike Grenadilla, which is typically going to be very brown, dark brown, possibly black if the company dies at black, Cocobolo, on the other hand, can come in quite an array of different shades of red. Today I did my entire warm-up on the Grenadilla, Grenadilla Lumiere barrel. Um, it's 65 millimeter. And so my warm-ups included mouthpiece exercises, long tones, uh, scales, and scale patterns with a drone, articulation exercises, um, and dexterity studies. I found with this barrel today, I was just very, very fatigued, um, even about halfway through my long tones. I felt like... I was really working quite hard um, to create the sound that I wanted to create the homogeneity. I also found that there was like a weird resistance or um, stuffiness in certain registers that um, just was a bit uncomfortable. I felt like that stuffiness. Uh, made my articulation feel a bit laborious. So, I like this one, but and there's some really, really great great qualities to it. I just don't think it's uh, the right fit for me or the right fit for my setup. So today I warmed up again uh, using the new traditional barrels. Uh, similar warm-up routine to what I did yesterday. So mouthpiece exercises followed by long tones with a drone. Uh, today we'll be doing minor scales and scale patterns, articulation exercises, and some dexterity studies. The most common reason people need a new barrel is they need a different length. As most of us know, a shorter barrel will raise the pitch and a longer barrel will lower the pitch. Most professional B-flat clarinets come with a 66 millimeter barrel. This might work well for you in groups you're used to playing in, but if you are used to tuning at A440 and suddenly find yourself with a group that tunes at A442 or A444, this barrel might not work for you, and to get up to pitch you might require a shorter barrel. Likewise, if you're used to tuning at 444 or 442 and need to come down to 440, this might require you to get a longer barrel. Temperature can also have a very big impact on tuning. Uh, if you are used to playing at room temperature but suddenly find yourself in a very cold pit orchestra, you may need a shorter barrel. 
If you're used to tuning at room temperature and find yourself playing a summer concert series where the temperature is 85 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit when it's time to play the concert, you might find yourself requiring a longer barrel to be able to tune with the ensemble. Of the two new traditionals, um, I really like both. There's a really nice freedom um, when you're playing. It blows very easily. Um, but I prefer the sound of the Cocobolo new traditional barrel to the Granadilla. Um, but I think that this barrel may be bit short for my B flat um, but this one I think definitely uh, wins out for right now over the uh, the Granadilla and the Lumiere I like the fat boy um it has a really easy feel when playing the sound is homogenous um the lower clarion feels just as resonant um as the other registers uh yeah and i remember really really liking uh this barrel for my a clarinet i think on my a it gave me a lightness and flexibility that I often looked for um, while playing my A clarinet that I don't think I normally um, found with the stock barrels. So this is definitely, definitely a contender. Let's talk about the bore on a clarinet barrel. Um, I think we can all agree that this is a decent, though albeit very crude, representation of what the clarinet's bore is like. Um, it starts out narrow at the top, and as it goes down to the bell, it's going to get wider. Now, it not, might not be a constant flare like that. It's probably going to be something more like this, where there's little spots where it gets wider or wider and narrower um, because it needs to compensate for things such as the register tube, um, the thumb tube, the exact placement of tone holes, things like that. But in general, it's still going to be getting wider as we get toward the bottom. A stock clarinet barrel is going to be something like this. It is just a straight cylinder, and that does the job decently. Um, it also might be something like this, where it starts out at a certain bore diameter. It might get wider or narrower at a certain spot and then kind of come back to where it started. So those will be the two things that you'll probably encounter for a stock clarinet barrel. Conventional wisdom would say, well, since the rest of the instrument is flaring out, the barrel bore should flare out too. And that's going to be something like this. Um, however, that's not too many barrels out there that are like that. They're usually either cylindrical or they're actually a reverse taper. It almost goes um, contrary to what, what you would think, but it actually starts out a little bit wider in the top and then gets narrower before it enters the clarinet. So why on earth would they do that? Well, um, it's to accommodate, um, most people like a larger bore mouthpiece, so the larger bore going into the larger part of the clarinet barrel, that helps. Um, it can also help with um, throat tones because the barrel is so close to the throat tone it's going to have a bigger impact on the notes that are closer to the barrel and then it can also have an impact on the 12th and it can make what a lot of people say the 12ths closer so imagine you're playing a low g and you hit the register key to go up to a d 
Um, if you check yourself with a tuner, on a stock barrel, that's probably not going to be like the same intonation. Like, say you are in tune on the low G, there's a very small chance that without embouchure adjustment, you're going to have be exactly in tune when you go up to the D. Um, but this reverse taper can actually help with that and will make the 12s a lot closer. And this is typically what you're going to see on most aftermarket barrels. Um, some companies like to provide the numbers for these, some don't. Uh, my advice to anybody looking for a barrel would be don't get caught up in the numbers on these things. First off, it's wood. It's probably not gonna be exactly the numbers they say it is, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but wood will take on moisture, it'll dry out, and it'll change in size slightly. Um, and the other thing is, like, who, who cares about the numbers? Your audience isn't gonna be looking at the numbers, they're gonna be listening to you play. So I would say to, my advice would be just uh, try out as many barrels as you can and find one that works for you. I really like the MOBA. Um, I like both of them, but there's something about the Coca Bolo that, I don't know, it just, it feels like it has such a more responsive uh, quality to it than the Granadilla barrels that I've tried. Um, while I think that the pitch on this one is a little high as I'm warming up, um, I definitely have found myself in positions in the orchestra and rehearsals where I wish I was at, where I was, where I wish I was able to get this high. Um, I think this one is probably a winner. providing me with all of the barrels and allowing me to keep them over the course of several weeks and try them and helping me make this video. If you're looking for clarinet supplies, cases, barrels, mouthpieces, reeds, check out his website, North Country Winds, um, and we'll see you next time for another video in our clarinet equipment series. Be safe. Thank you.